हरिओम तत्सत वेलकम टू स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयानंद सोसाइटी आर जर्नी टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब आर चैनल फॉर द मिस्टिकल मीनिंग्स एंड टू एंजॉय डेली सत्संग विद अस वी आर करेंटली एक्सप्लोरिंग द बुक सेल्फ इम्प्रूवमेंट योगा एसेज एंड इट इज अ वंडरफुल बुक ऑथर्ड बाय स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयानंद जी महाराज narrated by myself swami nikhilananda we are currently exploring the chapter of how to be truly religious and we'll continue the idea that god is above and the world is below that god is the shining in the shining realm of heaven somewhere far away and the world is steeped in darkness must be shunned that is not proper analysis a dynamic religious life must be lived by considering the world as a manifestation of divine glory every activity performed with the spirit of surrender is a religious effort that brings about a mystic coordination between the personality of man and the impersonality of the divine self between the individual and the universal between the relative and the transcendental between the jiva and ishvara in other words there is a macrocosm there is a microcosm the macrocosm is the entire cosmos created by divinity god universal energy whatever we want to call that divine name that is perfectly fine but then at the human level we become the jiva the individual soul a way to understand would be when you cook rice all the rice are cooked together and when you to see if they are cooked or not fully you test one grain of rice and if it is cooked then the whole pot is ready much in the same way god has not hidden anything from us he has given his essential dna to us in other words in our soul in our consciousness that is what our essence is so in we can say that god in his universe is at the macrocosmic level and we as his instruments in the human body are the microcosmic but everything is just scale miniature everything is identical otherwise all those qualities of god divinity reside within us a religious person does not risk losing his balance of mind when at work because his work is not an end in itself he works with the artistic skill of converting his activities into a process of simplifying his mind thereby intensifying his mental composure for him work is not everything he understands he has a work life balance he puts god before his work and yet does his work with perfection god is more intensely adored when religious effort is not confined to the physical plane but begins to invade the regions of the mind also it is indeed beneficial to sit in meditation to practice prayer at certain allotted times and to observe religious disciplines but with spiritual advancement a process of meditation continues even when you are active an undercurrent sweetness of divine prayer flows on even while you are engaged in various activities and you are gradually led to a perpetual awareness of the divine presence this is how you have seen all the sages and saints who do voluminous amounts of work and yet they are overjoyed smiling compassionate and they are not stressed like most worldly people are so all barriers are broken in the state of divine realization or self realization liberation mukti nirvana all these are synonymous terms when the practice of religion reaches its height all barriers caused by apparent differences ritualisms 
and sectarian beliefs break. God has created all of us as humans. We may look different. Colors may be different. Our habits and tastes may be different. But essentially, we are all born. We all die. We all give birth. We all cry. We all are happy. All these emotions that our blood is red <laughs> within, we all go through the same emotions. It doesn't matter which language we speak or who we are. In essence, we are God's children, every one of us. A truly religious man is the ideal of the Bible, the perfected being of the Quran, and the liberated sage of the Gita. He is a true Christian, a true Hindu, a true Mohammedan, a true Buddhist. In fact, he belongs to every religion upon the earth. You see, there are enlightened people everywhere and all religious people, all enlightened people will never fight about other religions. They will never argue or claim superiority. They understand all these are steps to reach to that peak of the mountain, different ways. Yet when you reach the top, the summit, it's all one and the same. An enlightened sage such as Jesus, Buddha, Ramakrishna Paramahansa, Ramana Maharishi, Mahatma Gandhi, Swami Shivananda, Swami Jyotirmayananda, my Guruji, all these enlightened saints, is they are not confined to any limited re religion. They become universal, they become one with all. He is the glory of the universe. Such a soul becomes one with the cosmos. He is the jewel of religious treasure. He is the beloved of all beings. He is the goal of all religious movements. And if we have not understood this deep concept, then we are still in early stages of our evolution and learning. Still the lower stages because Otherwise, you have to be like the sun. You don't restrict your rays only to America or to Africa. You give it to everybody unconditionally with love. Same thing with the rivers, the oceans, Mother Nature. Everywhere you will see God's glory and His generous concessions and grace upon humans, all of us. It is a great shame that people generate so much tension and hatred in the name of religion. Unfortunately, more people have been killed in the name of religion than all other reasons combined. How sad is that? And yet, thinking that they are religious, forcibly converting people to their religion, trying to force them and convince them that they are better than others. All this is ignorance and getting away from God, not getting close to God. Since ancient times, much violence and cruelty have been practiced in the name of propagating religion. The path of love has been strewn with the blood of violence. The path of peace has been covered with the sharp pebbles of intolerance. Look what they did to Christ and look what happened. <laughs> it flourished as a big religion. So we cannot hide or suppress or Muslims had done all kinds of things with the temples and so on. There is no sense in creating animosity or anger about it. It's just to understand that humans who think that this is the answer are unfortunately mistaken and time and again they are the ones who are doing more damage to themselves due to their rigid beliefs and intolerance. The path of self-effacement and humility is overgrown with the thorny bushes of hypocrisy and pride. And the path of light seems to be engulfed by the swirling mist of confusion and darkness. So if you have hatred, how can one grow? How can we even be called good human beings if we have that much hate and anger or intolerance against versus others? 
be truly religious be child like but not childish child like is innocence being childish is being stupid so <laughs> being innocent is good being bringing that child like fragrance is good but making mistakes that you should not be is not a good idea be humble and self effacing but not with a sense of humiliation and degradation be withdrawn from the clamor of desires and the glitter of the objects of the world but do not be drowned in dull passivity see being a saint doesn't mean being uh, leaving um, all desires and then craving for them it is leaving everything but yet being fulfilled you have found something better within that joy that peace that the world strives for they don't get it in the objects of the world otherwise everybody would be happy and peaceful so that has to come from within through your own effort so love god but do not harbor hatred towards the world because you cannot progress in your field otherwise step out of the world but do not ignore your daily duties towards the service of god in mankind many people think if i run away from the world i will be spiritually successful that is a misnomer it's a myth many people get become worse off because uh, the desires within continue to percolate and um, they are not tested in the world you are tested also somebody will scold you your ego gets uh, shook up daily etc so live in the world but be detached be live in the world like a boat lives <laughs> on the water you need the water but not for that water to come into your boat so keep that water <laughs> at distance be a living temple of god and let every activity arising out of you be a living commentary of the lofty scriptures of all the religions of the world whatever you speak should speak of god's glory and there is no bigger religion than that why compartmentalize it into isms and this and that it's okay if we want to but ultimately the the divine energy the cosmos is only one and universal so i hope you've enjoyed this series um of this chapter we have concluded it and in tomorrow satsang we will be picking up the chapter of a very important one the practice of self discipline which many of us struggle with this is swami nikhilananda hari om tat sat